Hello everyone. So for today's topic, we'll learn about what is denoising autoencoder. So the aim of this uh, discussion is to make you know about the denoising autoencoder in sufficient detail. Hopefully by the end of this, uh, you will understand that what exactly this is. So in the field of machine learning, as uh, if it's a subset of artificial intelligence, is concerned with building the machines that can carry out cognitive tasks in human-like fashion. This is, however, easier said than done for a number of reasons. I mean, you know, humans have large kind of uh, body of background knowledge in our disposal. Even more fascinating, we have little conscious knowledge of how this came to be. As an instance, we really do not know how we learn our mother tongues. Uh, we just grow up speaking them, apparently. Secondly, not all the information we have is actually important. Humans have evolved to be able to discern the importance of different sources or the objects of information. We are capable of ranking the different particulars of a situation and making decisions regarding the more important particular for a given situation. So before going into the denoising autoencoder, what is an autoencoder? Have we discussed about it? Well. So, an autoencoders are basically a neural network designed to obtain a compressed summary of data. This is a fancy way of saying that autoencoder is a designed to understand the underlying intricacies that make up the data. The compressed summary learned is the essence of the data, and ideally, having this summary would allow us to recover the data itself. So, more or less, it's it's something which basically have the ability to make the data go compress and then go decompress at the same time that we can get back the originality of the data itself. Now talking about the, um, uh, you know, the denoising autoencoder. So the autoencoder, the denoising autoencoder architecture is designed as the composite of two main parts, basically, of course. One is the encoder and the second one is decoder. Just... You have your input. Let's say and this input is quite distorted. And uh, this thing is passed in the set of encoder. You have the encoding channels. Let's say these are your encoding channels. And uh, of course, by the end, you have your bottleneck, which is there in the between. I'll call this to be. bottleneck and then you have your decoder segment you have your decoder segment so this is your encoder segment this is your decoder segment so what happens you have the image and let's say this is a input image and i can say that corrupted version of the actual data so what happens the corrupted version the corrupted version of the actual data is passed into the encoder to produce the encoding. Of course, we know that you know once the image is there and it produces the encoding on top of it with the help of the encoder. This is my encoder and this is my decoder. So it produ produces uh, um, uh, the encoding with the help of encoder. And uh, this is what we call as bottleneck. Or code embedding. Once it is there and it provides the um, encoding of that, this is what we call as a bottleneck. So this embedding is then passed into the decoder section. It goes to the decoder section, which reconstructs the data via the embedding method. And you get your image, a proper image, not the corrupted version, but the real noiseless image. So from here, it takes the corrupted version, it goes to the encoder part, encoder encodes and makes a bottleneck. And that bottleneck is passed to the decoder and decoder with the help of embedding creates back the real noiseless image. And this exactly is what we call as a denoising auto encoder. Okay, that's all for today.
then we'll see about the next topic in the next class. Thank you.